Next up, we talk about uh, saving water at home under materials. This is ranked at number 46 by 2050. Since we are focused on drawdown, so reducing carbon dioxide, we are going to look at, obviously, how saving water actually translates to saving energy and carbon. Uh, there is a lot of work on uh, so-called uh, water energy nexus or food water energy nexus which talk about how water plays a role. We, l we saw this a little bit before, uh, how much energy gets used for water supply, how much water gets used for energy production and so on and so forth. Uh, so 4.61 gigatons of CO2 can be reduced by 2050. The net cost for this ma uh, method suggested here are at $72.44 billion and net savings are at $1.8 trillion dollars so obviously a very nice solution or when it comes to uh, household water saving always comes down to uh, shower flushing uh, so toilets uh, sinks faucets leaks dishwashers uh, and just generally reducing the use and the reusing as much of uh, the water as possible. This is uh, what is now uh, normal where people look for low flush toilets and low flow showers and so on. The Nabiya shower head was five years in design and development and employed aerospace engineering for its micro uh, atomizing technology. The shower head produces hundreds or more droplets dispersed over five times the area of a regular shower. So you can see it's a nice jet. Uh, it's 13 times more thermally efficient, uh, the heat you feel on your body, and reduces water use by 70% compared to conventional shower heads, and by 60% compared to the United States uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency's water sense shower heads. So heating water is one of the biggest energy uh, consumptions for household water use. Uh, there is the cooling and heating of the uh, rooms, but there is the heating of the water for various uses, including shower and cooking and so on. <clears throat> Looking at some broader worldwide data, municipal water withdrawals in 2015, so this is total water withdrawal for municipal or domestic purposes measured in cubic meters per year. Municipal water is the annual quantity of water withdrawn primarily for direct use by the population governed by the municipalities. So rich countries have a uh, high uh, water availability and use, but here population is uh, a factor as well because we are looking at total water and not per capita. And then there are, of course, many other ranges of uh, water withdrawals by municipalities uh, ranging uh, <clears throat> up to 80 billion meter cube, uh, but this is uh, in 2015 and it keeps going up as uh, we know for sure. Municipal water as a share of total water withdrawals by uh, in 2015. So you can see that irrigation and industrial uses are still significant fraction with irrigation being upwards of 70 percent or more in most countries. So you can see that there are some places where uh, the municipal water withdrawal as a share of total is much higher than other places. So many agricultural countries, uh, you expect the municipal withdrawals and household water used to be uh, much uh, water used to be uh, much lower in as a fraction of the total. So domestic water withdrawals have increased more than 600 percent since the 1960s. So this is just a percent increase in water withdrawals by sector. But the total water withdrawals are of course much much higher for uh, irrigation, industrial and uh, livestock. We saw that food production beef is the heaviest water user and then come other fruits and vegetables and crops and so on but here domestic water use has gone up 600 percent this is not fun um, just to make a few points that are always uh, obvious and yet not always thought of broadly speaking you can reduce your direct water footprint by uh, turning off the tap while brushing your teeth 
using water saving toilets, installing a water saving shower head, taking shorter showers, just reducing shower time to five minutes uh, uh, as a rule can save a lot of water and hence energy because typically you are using hot water as well. Only washing your clothes when necessary and typically running full load in the washing machine instead of washing one or two things at a time. Fixing household leaks, which is also a big problem, especially in old houses, old uh, faucets. There are now water-saving faucets as well and automatic turn-off and on type faucets as well, sensor-driven uh, faucets, using less water in the garden and when cleaning, not disposing of medicines, pains and other pollutants down the sink which can cause other problems. Of course not mentioned here in this website is the uh, processes of saving water. Uh, so there is fortunately progression of water conservation standards. This is for the US but worldwide this is true in terms of newer appliances, uh, uh, faucets, shower heads, uh, toilets and so on. So you can see that uh, in terms of gallon per flush uh, toilets have gotten better from 1960 now uh, from six gallons per flush to just 1.2 uh, dishwasher. So there is additional factors. If you fl reduce flushing uh, by a few times per day, you can make a huge difference in water use and energy consumption as well. Dishwater, uh, gallon per uh, uh, wash, gallon per C, which is probably one load, uh, going from 15 gallons down to 7 gallons and the whopper of a change comes from clothes washers which goes from 40 gallons down to uh, 10. Let me figure out what is GPC before continuing. Well that should have been obvious, it's uh, gallons per cycle. Uh, I often uh, collect these figures, do my own research, but uh, not always very careful about looking up all the acronyms. Uh, nonetheless, gallons per cycle. Uh, the other thing that uh, is always recommended is to use rain barrels and rain harvesting systems uh, where you can actually collect uh, remarkably high amounts of water based on how much rain you get and that water can be used for various uh, applications for sure for gardening outside and uh, washing cars and maybe even used uh, uh, for uh, uh, other uses like flushing the toilets etc. Of course cost of plumbing for that would be high. Nonetheless collecting waters even for recharging the groundwater is a very good idea uh, in general. Okay overall 95% adoption of low flow taps and shower heads by 2050 could reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 4.6 gigatons by reducing energy consumption for heating wasted water. Scaling other water saving technologies would drive additional reductions. We model hot water only here in order to calculate energy savings because it's always focused on drawdown but the co-benefits are of course massive especially in places where water is under uh, severe stress in terms of access quality and quantity physical access as well as economic access.